does come to those farmers, how does it affect their specific weather and the crops on the grounds? Well, I can promise you nobody's taking a swim in the Snake River today. I mean, Eric probably knows better than anybody. Weather affects everybody differently. Like me, who's wearing a jacket and people at the store who are buying pumpkins now, even to crops in the ground. Hey, Brittany. Hey, Joe. We arrived here in Fremont County a little after noon today, and the latest information we have is coming out of the Fremont County Sheriff's Office behind me. High temperatures today. We're on the mild side. We've seen an increase in cloud cover on our Twin Falls Sky Cam temperature right around 56 degrees, and it is breezy at the moment. Putting you first, we took a trip to the mountains here in Chalice to see exactly how an overpopulation of wild horses is affecting your public land. Chance for scattered rain and snow moving through Blaine County up in the Wood River Valley to kick off our day. By the afternoon, we're going to see a chance of scattered rain moving through the Magic Valley, maybe some thunderstorm activity as well. We've all dealt with them before, and wind advisories are nothing new. Unfortunately, the accidents aren't either, or the tragedies that can happen. I want to point out this video that we pulled earlier from the Twin Falls County Sheriff's Department. Now, what that means is really more in terms of financial responses. So there's three objectives that city manager Travis Rothweiler said that this accomplishes. And you could tell that's where their main concern lies in coming all the way from the lakes of Louisiana to the snowy mountains in Idaho. And Joe, this is the flyer that they had in hand. You can see the reward $20,000 right there for any information leading to the safe return. Pronounced dead on the scene today. And Joe, I've been out here to cover stories about six times and typically the these things have ended with someone breaking a leg or being, you know, stuck on the side of the hill. But uh, you, you never hope that you have to cover a story like this. Unfortunately, today was one of those days. Chris, you got a packed house here at the Twin Falls County Fair. Thanks. One thing that I think people are curious about, especially you coming here, how Southern Idaho treated you? This fire has burned about 60 acres. Is that correct? Yep. 60 acres and we also had the Wilson fire that has burned 317 acres. Can we get an update on the status of that fire? The title track is a, is a duet with a, with a really big good buddy of mine, a uh, very famous superstar of country music. Um, you can name him. I mean, if, you, yeah, yeah. Well, if you've lived in Twin, you know exactly what's going to happen here. Dave Woodhead has started what's really turned into a family tradition for the Twin Falls community. He raises a copper ball to the top with his truck and then lowers it down. Dave, tell me what gave you this idea to start this whole tradition, what's really became very popular here in the community. A wild hare, I suppose. <laughs> In the mountain town of Ketchum, a question is looming from the snowy mountaintops to the city streets to the steps of City Hall. Will voters approve an increase in property taxes to bring a new fire station to the town? The question was asked and answered when voters turned down a similar proposal for $23 million in 2016, but this year's vote is different. For one, it's cheaper. Construction of the fire station is $11.5 million. Ketchum City officials have also hosted a series of open houses and educational events, making sure voters are aware of every minute detail with the proposal, especially how much it will cost them. The cost to the taxpayer is $20 per year per $100,000 of assessed property value. The need for a new fire station is relatively well known by residents as the size and safety of the structure has been in question for at least a decade. It is not absolutely safe to use it would be condemned if it weren't back grandfathered in. And seen firsthand by Ketchum first responders. Well, we had a bit of a roof leak at this point, and uh, the ceiling in the bay actually fell down on top of the ambulances. And the problems go from top to bottom. Our living quarters, our sleeping areas actually don't meet fire code. But tax increases are tough to pass. Looks always going to have a problem in allotting money for anything but people will ultimately have to choose how the future of safety and service in their community will be. We're a full EMS paramedic agency as well as a full rescue agency. Because the current status quo is no longer an option. We may actually end up in a temporary quarter somewhere, so uh, the future will tell the story. Good evening, everyone, and thanks for tuning in for your News at 5. I'm Joe Martin. Well, after weeks in quarantine for possible exposure to the coronavirus, an Idaho man is back home with his family tonight. In a KMBT exclusive, Garrett Hoddle was at the Twin Falls Airport for a reunion that won't soon be forgotten. 
It's a small crowd at Magic Valley Regional Airport in Twin Falls with big emotions as parents Linda and Lewis Pond await the return of their son Tim, a passenger on the Diamond Prince's cruise ship, a ship where hundreds of passengers contracted the coronavirus and those aboard were forced under quarantine in Japan's Tokyo Bay. We knew he was in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> Extended vacation. Tim kept the world informed of his time on the cruise ship with posts that expressed hints of positivity that almost seemed to go against the grain as the troubling scene played out on the television screen and the virus spread to other passengers. It must have been scary. It was, because I was hoping every day that he would text me and say, Okay, I'm still okay. Tim said he came down with a fever aboard the Diamond Princess, but tested negative for the virus. Now I wondered about it, if, if he'll still be okay when he gets home. Tim would be among the hundreds of American passengers evacuated from the Diamond Princess back to U.S. soil, where he would find himself once again under another 14-day quarantine period, which she timelined for us literally from meal to meal. So they kept serving him two strawberries and... He's allergic to strawberries. Oh. <laughs> now, after a whirlwind of uncertainty, fear, and glimmers of hope, Tim is back home. How was this flight compared to your other flights, I guess? Well, this one, this one was delayed, so it was the longest. <laughs> but probably the sweetest for an Idahoan whose vacation was upended by virus and played out on the national headlines. Now he's home. As for what's next, Tim is looking forward to seeing his bed and a doggie's missed. We'll see if she still remembers me. <laughs> In Twin Falls, Garrett Hoddle, KMVT News. Now, Tim credited the Princess crew, as well as his habit of already engaging in preventive measures against the virus, such as washing your hands and not touching your face, for helping him not get sick. He also talked more with us about his experience on the Princess and how the Japanese and U.S. governments manage the situation, which we'll include in our website. High temperatures today. We're on the mild side. We've seen an increase in cloud cover on our Twin Falls Sky Cam. Temperature right around 56 degrees, and it is breezy at the moment here in Twin Falls. Across the board in that mid-50s region in both the Magic Valley and the Wood River Valley, or Minicraz region rather, up in the Wood River Valley, closer to 50 degrees. Seeing those breezy wind speeds about 10 to say 20 miles per hour throughout the course of our afternoon, and that should continue going into our evening. We're seeing some of that scattered, isolated rain shower activity moving in from the southwest thanks to that low pressure system moving off the west coast. So there is a chance overnight we could see some rain shower activity. Taking a step back here now, we do have an upper level low that's spinning in the Gulf of Alaska. This is going to bring some changes into our forecast, but let's get through one day at a time and let's go through tonight at the moment. You can see on our pinpoint Doppler, nice and calm. No active weather. We're going to have mostly clear skies. Current temperatures 57 degrees in Twin Falls, as I mentioned earlier a touch warmer probably 71 up in Jerome up in the Wood River Valley under that 60 degree mark but I can guarantee it's cold outside tonight folks no matter where you are and we are going to see some changes in terms of cloud cover and precipitation going into Sunday we have another low pressure system that's going to roll in tomorrow bringing a chance of snow for some areas now at the moment we do have a winter weather advisory in effect for mainly western Idaho a winter storm warning in effect for southeastern Oregon where the bulk of this next system is going to impact but we are going to see some effects going into tomorrow but we have seen a few snowflakes overnight here in twin there's a series of winter weather advisories and wind advisories in effect for the viewing area twin falls county gooding county jerome county southern portions of minidoka and blaine county and all of kaja county through monday afternoon now what exactly does that mean it means we have a chance of snow basically that's going to carry forward through monday afternoon as i said earlier i think places like kaja county will see the most of it breezy conditions as well bordering on windy gust as strong as 45 miles per hour, meaning there could be some potentially drifting snow, blowing snow that could reduce visibility rates at times on the roads, and then we're going to see temperatures plunge overnight. So even if you don't see snow, whatever falls in the ground is going to freeze, and you are going to want to give yourself some extra time to get wherever you're going tomorrow.
Hey, and thanks for sticking with us tonight. A very active weather night indeed. We've had multiple fires start due to lightning strikes, and there is still some thunderstorms moving through the region. At the moment, we have this isolated thunderstorm just to the south of Stanley. It looks like it's going to move in the next hour or so, and we have some isolated rain showers moving through the region as well. An update at the Wilson fire just to the north of Hazleton. It's burned an estimated 300 acres. The good news is BLM does hope to have this contained by Sunday, as early as Sunday at 10 o'clock. And once again, I am here at the Twin Falls City Park. I have Samantha and Ian on my right, your left if you're sitting in home. And then on my left, your right, I have Gwenifer and Morgan nailed the names. And we're going to try to nail your forecast here. Obviously, the cloud cover has been the big story. And if you take a look at your seven days. A man was booked for disorderly conduct and malicious injury to property following an incident on Wednesday night at Outback Steakhouse. According to court documents, Andrew Ryan Larson punched out a window and threw objects inside the Twin Falls Outback Steakhouse. He also tried to gain access to the kitchen. Upon the officer's arrival, Larson had left the restaurant and was headed towards the visitor center. When the officer approached, Larson dropped to his knees and placed his hands behind his head and was detained without incident. KMBT spoke with Lieutenant Terry Tucson, who tells us what the public should do if they were ever to witness a situation like this. We live in a time where we always have to be vigilant. We have to be aware of our surroundings and what's happening around us. And if we see something, we need to say something. Tucson goes on to say the best thing that people can do when they observe a disturbance is to become an ideal witness and wait for help to arrive. Well, January is Radon Awareness Month. Putting you first, we have what you need to know about the gas. The Idaho Department of Health and Welfare says that two in five homes in Idaho have higher than recommended radon levels. Radon is the second leading cause of lung cancer behind smoking, causing an estimated 21,000 deaths each year in the U.S. News at 9. Well, thanks for tuning in to your news tonight at 9. I'm Garrett Hoddle. New in our outbreak 2020 coverage, Idaho has 1,897 confirmed and probable cases of coronavirus, with 938 of those being listed as recovered. Now, 10 new cases were reported today, but thankfully, no new deaths. Here's a brief summary of total and confirmed cases across the Gem State. Ada County has 650 cases leading the state. Blaine County 492 and here in the Magic Valley Twin Falls County has 156 Jerome County 46 Lincoln County 22 Kaja County 12 Minidoka 10 and Goody 9 for the latest information visit KMVT.com to view our COVID-19 tracker and we should also mention that recovered doesn't mean people aren't still hospitalized or infectious it only shows how many people are still alive 30 days after the onset of COVID-19 symptoms. As of right now, the death toll across the gem state is at 56. New fatalities were recorded on Saturday in Ada and Elmore counties. Now, your KSVT first forecast with Garrett Hoddle. Well, we really lucked out today. What a gorgeous view on our Canyon Ridge High School time lapse cam. Plenty of blue sky and sunshine. The one caveat obviously was a little bit breezy. Same story, different temperatures up at the Friedman Memorial Airport. Highs today a little bit warmer than yesterday. Mid 60s in the Wood River Valley, 70 degrees here in the Magic Valley, Burley and 71 as you can see in Jerome. We are going to see an increase in cloud cover overnight presenting a chance maybe for some showers in the higher elevations. The bigger story tomorrow though is going to be wind speeds. We have a wind advisory in effect for the highlighted portions on your screen, the Minicash region, all of Lincoln County, Southern Blaine County. We're going to have more details on this and a huge warm up that we're going to see midweek in our full weather forecast. We'll lay it all out for you coming right up. And well, another wave of states is preparing to reopen non-essential businesses after a week's long stay at home orders. Americans can now easily see how much it will cost to deliver a baby or even get an x-ray. Our Shirley Busey Qua spoke with directors at St. Luke's Hospital in Boise and tells us what they've seen since the law went into effect. Thank you, Eric. Sun Valley will be hosting its annual Ski for Air Service Day in a couple of weeks. The annual event will take place January 26th and is put on by the Fly Sun Valley Avalanche and Sun Valley Resort with full day lift tickets being sold for $50 with all proceeds going to support air service to Sun Valley. The tickets 
will go on sale January 15th at participating ski shops through Saturday, January 25th, or until all tickets are sold out. Well, it's never too early to start teaching kids about bullies. Today, we take you to a local daycare and preschool in our Too Strong for Bullies segment. You were over in Rexburg earlier this week, and it's yes. been chilly, it's snowy, less than ideal weather. I know you got yourself a new pair of socks, though. You looking forward to using those with some of the colder and snowy weather on the way? Yeah, you know what? Let's just lay out our private conversations <laughs> in the news.